miles But it all true I'd like to know your point of view Today I want to talk to you about the narcissist and pets I have experience with narcissists watching them with pets I've noticed there's a couple different extremes that they go to and and then you'll notice that there's actually videos that talk, there's some videos people that people say that narcissists hate cats I've actually experienced that but I've also experienced people who, who my parents in fact stole my cat they took, took my cat and and, did, and we give her back uh, so and, and we always had cats growing up as well um, there were always Persian cats uh, which were always totally neglected, full of mats, and so they were either they were either being miserably brushed, shaved, or they were heavily matted. They have pets around in much the same way that they have children around. They, there is not a big distinction that I can see between the way that they dealt with people and our pets. They are very much the same. They are extensions of themselves. They are really just there for their amusement um, when they feel like it, but very neglected. What kind of made this come up for me is that I hadn't actually, I, I'd go, I always thought of myself as a pet person, but in reality, I hadn't really had pets in my life during this whole transitional time, between the time when they gave my cat away and until I settled in with my second husband. And we, and I started, I really want this, I got this pang to really want a dog, and then that's expanded out of where I have seven dogs presently, um, just because I have, I have a litter of puppies that I need to sell. But, um, but we're still gonna have three or four dogs that are gonna be ours to keep. It, but, you know, the way that we treat these dogs, they're just completely family members, and so it got me to thinking, you know, what was it like as a kid? Because we always had pets when I was a kid, and you know what were my parents like and and it's gotten me sometimes I, f I just feel terrible because I remember now the way that we treated our pets and I didn't know any better because I was a little girl but the pets were totally neglected they were really neglected and the, the big sign was that there were all these strange injuries you know I, I never really thought anything of it so many of our pets met with some haphazard accidental demise for instance talk about the Persian cats well get cat past it. Persian cats twice this cat had one kitten the first one was born stillborn the second one had this little girl and I was so excited about this little kitten it was the cutest little kitten and I would rush home every day to to you know see this kitten this little tiny kitten was kept out in the garage okay I think about that now, I think, what in the world was the kitten doing in the garage? And how many animals died in that garage? Well, this kitten died in the garage. My mother ran over it with the car. So I get home after school, there it is, stiff as a board, back behind where her car would have been. So clearly what happened is she started the car up, the kitten got scared and went and hid behind the tire. I mean, that's what, that's what I'm guessing happened. One of our dogs died, we had a, wood, a stack of wood out in that garage, it fell off the wood pile. And and punctured a lung. The dog that did that, its mother, um, was my little dog that I got when I was 10 years old. Her name was Mandy. And Mandy, she got pregnant by all the neighborhood dogs. Why did, Why she was never spayed, I don't know. I think she was eventually spayed. She had, she had two litters, she had basically two litters of five puppies. They looked like every neighborhood dog. Poor little Mandy. Mandy was a like little, she was a little cockapoo, you know, mixed dog. She was, Actually, and this is kind of an interesting thing too. Every pet that we had, every single pet that we had was a purebred pet, except for the pet that they got for me. And my little Mandy, who was the greatest little dog, but she was just a little, a little mutt, a little, we kind of called her a cockapoo, but we don't really know what she was. She was a little, she had a poodle mix. She was a little poodle mix, something or other. But she was a great little dog, little black dog. And, but she just, you know, had random mutt babies with you know she was never fixed never you know just and i didn't know any better obviously i'm a little girl so but i'm thinking as you know thinking about it now we, we just had our we just had our um our boy dog uh neutered and but we you know we had these we, we had these puppies that were planned you know these planned puppies and they've been such an ordeal you know we were right there i was like a midwife to colette when she had these puppies both times she had a cesarean section i just had a puppy what made me think to do this video today is that one of the puppies was sick and i took it into the 
um, into the vet and, and, and she's been on IV fluids all day. I just went and picked her up and I have to take her back in tomorrow to be on the IV again tomorrow. Um, but you know, we're talking like a $600 day, you know? You know, so I mean, it's a commitment to have, you know, have have pets and to, and to really treat them right. We cook, we cook food for them. And you know, granted, we're probably a little over the top, but you know, we we really baby our dogs. They're they're just like members of the family. Well, that the way that my that my parents treated the dogs really was very much in line with the way that they treated us, treating treating kids. It was just for appearances and for. Um, what they got out of it. I'm sure that for narcissists, they love the, you know, it's gotta be, you know, probably low level, but still narc supply to come home and have somebody so happy to see you wagging your tail, wagging their tail and so happy to see you every day. That's huge. I mean, you know, the dogs have all kinds of narcissistic supply. It's not a high level narcissistic supply, but it feels good to, you know, someone. And this is, I, this is why I say that they're, um, you know, th th some people talk about, oh, that they treat them better than they treat people or they treat dogs better than or animals better than they treat their children but it's really what it is is they treat them the same as they treat their children it's just that d dogs don't give them any trouble dogs don't give them any trouble it, how you know and if they did they get rid of it there's no doubt about it in my mind that this and this is why I say that when we talk about love loving pets if a person a person can get by being a narcissist and have pets because it's not really that kind of love. I mean, it's easy to it's easy to um, make appearances or to, you know fluff or something. When it's not giving you any trouble, it's agreeing with everything you say. It's looking at you longingly. They don't even talk. You know, they don't even talk. And so you can bet that if the if a narcissist has a pet that is indifferent to them or doesn't like them, they're not going to put up with that. They're not going to like that pet back. They're probably going to get rid of it. And you know, when you have a teenager, for instance, and they don't like you at all, you still unconditionally love them. You still you still love them and you're still there for them. There's no comparing what a pet and what a child is like. The amount of it's just it's just so much easier. You know, it's just so much easier. And of course the highs and the lows you know, it, also the highs aren't as high either. You know, I mean your pet's wonderful, but you're not gonna get the same thing out of out of your wonderful loving pet as you're going to get out of a, a wonderful loving child and a, grat a gratifying relationship with your child it's just not the same oh, and in the amount of effort the amount of work it takes and the amount of heartbreak it takes is not the same colette lost three of her puppies one of them lived for five weeks and we had to put it down that was really sad but <laughs> you know that was nothing compared to what losing my son was like you know what I mean? I mean, we're talking about really two different, two different uh, ballparks of things. But for a narcissist, I don't believe that that's so. For a narcissist, I believe that both of those losses would have fallen somewhere in the mid-range, and it would have been about the same. I think that 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 for a narcissist, for my for my mother, for instance, losing me out of her life and losing her grandson who died is no different than if she lost a pet would be no different and in all cases she's over it pretty quick there are cases like I do know somebody who is very reclusive and very isolated and a narcissist this dog when we lived together and this dog was a black lab and it had it had just a miserable life it had to stay completely um, on this blanket it could only stay on this on, it, on its bed and like we would even be in the living room and the dog bed was in the kitchen and it would have to go stay in the kitchen but away from us it was ridiculous. It was so, uh, you know, it was on the verge of dog abuse. But he actually hated cats. He really hated cats. So this would, this would go along with the person who said the thing about hating cats. He really did hate cats. When this dog died, it, he was he seemed to be upset about it. The point of it is, is that the dog it was purely convenient for him. It was, but she it, he had she had to follow his rules, and if she didn't, he wouldn't have had her around. You know, it, and this is why he. He was completely incompatible with people because he couldn't control everything people did. Narcissists, they want things to make, they want to make appearances, they want things to make them feel good. They, they do things for narc supply, right? So if you can get a purebred dog, it's a conversation piece, 
and it's not causing you too much trouble. It's happy wags its tail when you come home and all that. That's really the whole point. They're not thinking a lot about the dog's happiness, what the dog's needs are. Um, they're definitely not wanting to be bothered with anybody's needs. It's all about what the pet can do for them. Just like with children, I really don't think that they see it very different from children at all. They do have pets around, but that they are kind of neglected. But there might be a facade of a fluffy, of a, of a, oh, you know, um, like a, 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 a over attention kind of thing. It's more comfortable for them to put a lot of attention to a pet, but it's still very, very conditional. It's still, it's all what's coming back to them. And also I think that they triangulate. I think they do a weird triangulation thing with their children. That they, they try and, and like make their children jealous with their pets. Because they really do think that they kind of see them the same. And, and there are kids of narcissists that feel like they, that their parents treat their pets better than they treat them. My parents probably treated their pets about the same. Oh, I was gonna say about Mandy. So my Mandy's my little, my little companion. And uh, when I went away to college, she got hit by, she was black, she got hit by a car. You know, so she was out running around, you know. So, you know, that's just the thing. It's like, why is the dog out running around the neighborhood, getting pregnant, getting hit by cars? You know, it's just sheer and total neglect. You know, just complete and total neglect. And, and there was also abuse. Like, the ways that my father would, like, house train a dog was ridiculous. It was ridiculously abusive. You know, I just cringe when I think about it now. You know, I hadn't really thought about it. I hadn't really thought about it until, you know, now that I have these little dogs and I just can't imagine treating my, these dogs the way that our pets were treated when I was a little girl. It was just really awful. All the pets that we had when I was growing up, pets that I went, like we had that I, when I left for college, they all died of accidental deaths. All the, the pets that we had when I left for college all died of some accident. That shouldn't happen, you know, that happens once or something, but I mean, should have that happen to every single one of your pets? It's very weird. You know, it's a, it's a sign of a neglect, at least, if not abuse. But you know, I think about, you know, where these dogs stayed and where they spent their time. And let me just be like out, you know, this, we had a bulldog when I was a, a little girl and the bulldog was just out in a pen, you know, and it, we live in the Pacific Northwest where it rains a lot. And I remember like the rain, the dog from being soggy, being out there. I remember it, it, it chewing a hole through the gate and being out there. And I was just, oh, I just, my heart just aches now to think about it. I feel so, rest like I should have gone out there. I should have help the dog you know I would I, I, I would say things I remember saying things like and feeling bad but I thought that my dad knew how to I thought that he knew something I didn't know about that this was dogs like this or this is what dogs have, you know and a lot you know you do that as a little kid you think that your parents know all they know what they're doing and so you go along with it you know I you know I think about I think about their well-being and what you know they're so helpless you know and taking good care of them because they can't take care of themselves you know, I think about that. They are pure, pure positive energy and pure love. And, and they're so, so innocent. You know, what if she was my mom's? My mom probably wouldn't even, probably, this puppy probably would have died. Had, I mean, my mom would not have taken, probably not have noticed, or, or she might have rallied and, and lived, but she would, my mom wouldn't have taken her to the vet today and spent 500, 500, almost $600 on her, on getting IVs and shots and all these different things today that I did, but, you know, she's my responsibility, you know, she's my responsibility, even if I'm not going to keep her, she's, you know, she's helpless and she's sick, you know, and, and I want her to be well. I saw this thing that I was doing today, no one was going to see me doing any of this, you know, it wasn't like going to make me look good, so if I was in it for a narcissistic supply, it wouldn't have happened. Narcissistic supply, that's really what it's about. Whatever, whatever way they get it, they get that out of it, that's, that's what it's all about for them. Just as everything else is for them. All right, you guys, thanks a lot. I will talk with you later.